Tampa Bay Rays vs. New York Yankees The Tampa Bay Rays have been a middling team this year as they are fourth in the alley standings and are 10.5 games behind in the division and 6.0 games back of the final spot in the Al wildcard. The Rays have been struggling offensively as the team has a dot .235 forward slash dot .310 forward slash dot .370 slash line while averaging 3.89 runs per game up to this point. One of the team's best tools has been the ability to steal bases as they are fifth with 96 steals while being caught 35 times. First baseman Yandy Diaz has been hitting well as he has a .725 ops with 8 home runs, 46 RBI, 35 runs scored and a 31-61 walk to strikeout ratio this year. This Tampa Bay team needs to figure out if they are contenders for a playoff spot or not this season. The New York Yankees have been playing extremely well this season as they are second in the AL East and they are 0.5 games back of the Baltimore Orioles for the divisional lead. Their offense has been doing a decent job as they are 12th in the league with a .755 team ops and scoring 4.99 runs per game. The team has been able to hit for a large amount of power as they are second in the sport with 140 total home runs thus far. Center fielder Aaron Judge has been doing incredibly well at the plate as he has recorded a .308 forward slash .435 forward slash .677 slash line with 34 home runs, 86 RBI, 74 runs scored, and 5 steals without being caught. This Yankees team has won 5 of their last 7 games, and it looks like they have turned the corner. The Yankees are far and away the better team, and should be able to dominate similar to what they did on Friday. Taj Bradley has struggled on the road as in 4 games he has won 1 with a 6.200 era, and a .309 opposing batting average in 20.1 innings, while Nestor Cortez is 4-3 with a 1.81 era and a 0.79 whip in 64.2 innings 10 starts at Yankee Stadium this season. Go with the New York Yankees to win this game and continue their solid play lately. With a day game after a night game, the lineups are going to be a little less as backup catchers are going to be in the lineup. These teams combined to score seven total runs, so they showed they will be able to put zeros on the board. All in all, go with under 8.5 runs in this game as the better option. Cardinals vs Atlanta Braves The Cardinals have been doing a decent job lately as they are second in the NL Central standings and are 4.5 games behind in the division, but are 0.5 games ahead for a spot in the NL Wild Card. The Cardinals have been hitting at a decent level as they have a dot .245 forward slash dot .310 forward slash dot .384 slash line while averaging 4.15 runs per game up to this point. The lineup has not done too well in terms of hitting for power as they are 25th in baseball with 94 total home runs. Left fielder Brendan Donovan has been doing a decent job at the plate as he has a .756 ops with 8 home runs, 45 RBIs, 43 runs scored, and a 29-53 walk to strikeout ratio. This team is competing for the NL Central crown and needs to hit better to do so. The Atlanta Braves have been playing well as of late and are still doing well this season as they are second in the NL East as they are 8.5 games back in the division and 4.0 games up in the NL wildcard. Their offense has been performing at an okay level as they are 14th in the league with a .709 team ops and scoring 4.28 runs per game. The team has also been aggressive with the bats as they are 26th in the sport with 266 total walks on the season. Third baseman Austin Riley has been hitting well as he has a dot .257 forward slash dot .329 forward slash dot .450 slash line with 12 home runs, 39 RBIs and 48 runs scored. If the offense can continue to improve, they will be in a great spot to cut the gap in the NL East. When looking at the previous seven games from these starting pitchers, there is a bit of a gap as Kyle Gibson is 3-1 with a 5.15 era and a 1.61 whip and 36.2 innings of work, while Charlie Morton is 2-3 with a 3.76 era and a 1.08 whip in 40.2 innings during that span. Even the bullpens show a bit of a difference here, as the Braves are second in Major League Baseball with a 2.94 reliever era thus far, while the Cardinals are seventh with a 3.50 bullpen era. All in all, go with the Atlanta Braves to win this game. In the last 10 games of the first half of the year, these teams have been able to score runs as the Cardinals are scoring 5.6 runs per game, while the Braves are averaging 4.5 runs per game in that span. Throughout the season, when these teams are making contact, they are hitting well as Saint. 
Louis is 7th with a .295 team batting average of balls in play, while Atlanta is 13th with a .292 team BABIP. Go with over 8.5 runs in this game, as the better bet here. Detroit Tigers vs Toronto Blue Jays The Detroit Tigers have been struggling this season, but were able to pick up a 5-4 road win to begin the series. The team was just 7 for 33 with 1 walk and 9 strikeouts. Mark Kana and Wenseel Perez each hit a home run to show off their power. The team went just 1 for 2 with runners in scoring position and left 3 Tigers on base. Jack Flaherty pitched well, giving up a pair of runs in 5.2 innings of work. The Toronto Blue Jays have been struggling this year and are coming off Friday's 5-4 home loss to begin this series. The team went 7 for 34 with 1 walk and 9 strikeouts in the game. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and George Springer each hit a home run and the team went hitless in four at bats with runners in scoring position. Chris Bassett struggled as he allowed five runs in 6.2 innings. The Detroit Tigers and the Toronto Blue Jays are both struggling this season but the Tigers are the better team and not very close. These starting pitchers are on different levels in the last seven games as Reese Olsen is 3-2 with a 4.58 era and a 940 walk to strikeout ratio in 39.1 innings while you see Kikuchi's 1-3 with a 6.42 era and a 1.49 whip in 33.2 innings in that span. There is a significant difference in the amount of home runs these pitching staffs have allowed this year. The Tigers are 8th in the sport with 98 home runs allowed while the Blue Jays are worst in baseball with 134 home runs given up. All in all, go with the Toronto Blue Jays to even up the series with a win on Saturday afternoon. These teams know how to give up runs and they were able to surpass the total with better pitchers on the mound on Friday night. Neither team has been doing too well in terms of turning double plays this season as Detroit is 13th in the majors with 78 total double plays turned while Toronto is 17th in Major League Baseball with 71 total double plays turned. These bullpens are also not doing too well late in games as the Tigers are 18th in the sport with a 4.11 reliever era while the Blue Jays are 29th in the big leagues with a 4.88 bullpen era so far. Go with over 8 runs in this game as they should be able to take advantage of two struggling starting pitchers by putting early runs on the board. Los Angeles Angels vs Oakland Athletics The Angels have yet to officially list a starter for either the first or second game of this weekend series. Griffin Canning is listed as the probable starter for the first game, and that leaves Tyler Anderson or Jose Soriano for the second game. But the Halos may switch up the entire rotation. Mitch Spence will take the mound for the Athletics in the second game of this series with the Angels. Spence allowed six runs in three and two-thirds innings and took the loss against the Phillies in his final start before the All-Star break. The Angels have yet to officially list a starter for either the first or second game of this weekend's series. Griffin Canning is listed as the probable starter for the first game, but I suspect the Angels will start either Jack Kochewitz or Tyler Anderson. Regardless of who takes the mound, they have been dismal. Los Angeles is 28th in team era, serving up the fifth most home runs in baseball. They do not strike out many batters, except for Jose Soriano, and their 7.86K9 is 27th in MLB. Oakland is fourth in home runs, and they will take advantage of the weak platoon that the Angels send out. My team pick is Oakland Athletics to win. Spence gave up five hits, walked five, and struck out six. Spence struggled to throw strikes and served up a season-high three home runs before being pulled with two outs in the fourth inning. The righty's five walks were the most he's yielded in a game this season. Spence has allowed at least five runs in three of his last four starts and has a 4.81 era with 50 strikeouts and 11 starts since the Athletics moved him into the rotation on May 17th. He's won only two of those starts. He will take a 4.75 era, 1.32 whip, and 72-23 KB, cross 83.1 innings bullpen rotation into this start. Oakland has played well at home against the Angels, and although both teams are buried at the bottom of the American League West, they have had their number. Heading into the first game of this weekend series, Oakland has won six straight home games against the Angels. They are averaging over 5.5 runs per game over their last three contests against Los Angeles. The Athletics have been abysmal on the road, but their 22-25 home record is decent considering they have only won 37 games. Take the over 8.5 runs with confidence.